What's up, Creative Faces? Ella Peer, Creative Sound, Creative University, Beat Project. So I am in the middle of creating a drum pack. Yes, indeed. I've been trying to do this for a very long time. It's not because it's it it's a long process. It's start, stop, start, stop, being distracted by other other projects or whatnot. So you can kind of see why I'm making this video because there are some things I wanted to share that I thought was pretty cool. For this process, if you're into making sample packs, I think Studio One is probably the best, in my opinion, all-in-one type situation. We're talking about audio batch converter, which is the main topic of this video. And I wanna show you guys some things in here. And it just makes life so much easier when you're dealing with a bunch of files and want to convert something over instead of going inside of studio one and bouncing things one by one it's just but even doing things inside of studio one there is a really cool way of doing things so just real quick i'll take you guys over so basically this is batch converter and these are all of the files and so like i said over time uh start stop and doing things differently over time i had different like file types some of them was aif i think but i wanted to convert all of them to wave and then i think the sample rate was different it was 44.1 but i wanted it to be all 48 24 bit is the resolution that i wanted to go with and I also wanted everything to be normalized at a peak value of negative 0.6, right? That's just kind of how I'm doing things right now. And so if, if we're taking a look at this thing, this thing is really cool. So basically what you do is you, all you have to do is just drag and drop all your files and it'll drop here at the top. And it's, it's showing success because it is, that's, that's the, the confirmation when you bring everything everything was successful right and then at the bottom is the result of after you bounced everything down so um i don't know exactly the algorithm and how things work in here but it just seems like things are super fast when you bounce things back down you guys know it when you bounce things down inside the doll it takes a little time to do that depending on the file size right of course but doing things here in this batch deal it's like it's super cool so what i'm gonna do here is just remove them all i'm gonna just do something from scratch just to show y'all how this works i'm gonna remove all of this but real quick here off to the side where it says process this is how you get things to happen in in terms of effect like formatting your files in my case, I want everything to be normalized at negative six, like like I just mentioned, right? Or you could change this to respect the value here. But in my case, I'm just going to leave it normal. And I was looking at this here, this repair deal, like just drag it over or double click. And so there's a D clicker, an invert phase, a remove DC this is pretty like i like to have that option remove um dc which is like dealing with clicks right and then this repair sample rate i don't really need this because i can correct those down here so i have everything so by default i guess what it will say if these are not checked it'll just say keep if you just so happen to want to keep the the type the resolution the sample rate even the channels channels is just from mono to stereo so in this case a lot of times like when you get drums like for me sometimes when i'm mixing drums sometimes i have people send me stereo it's easy to convert that stuff down inside of studio one but here is a even some you know before you bring it in studio one you can change from stereo to mono or whatever that's supposed to be mono or if you want it to be I, I don't know how that would work though like if you change something from mono to stereo you know it's already in mono i don't know how much of a difference but hey you can change that here but anyway in my case i want 
to keep everything at wave i want the resolution of 24 and then i want everything to be 48 in my case you can go all the way up to 192 if you want to and uh but keep in mind when you go further up you know the file size is much bigger so i wanted everything to be like uniform you know like that type deal um a pin process info i just leave that unchecked i think this is the process like the metadata that's being um converted down will also attach itself to the name of but i don't want that and then down here you can choose to keep it in the same folder or pick your own folder of choice so in my case i think what i'm going to do here is okay this is fine i also say use this folder as i was using before so we're going to pick that folder to start the process here and yeah that's what that's what we're going to go for and i'm just going to go ahead and drag over some files i'm just kind of show you guys what's going on say i, I want to drag these files over and you just drag them in right and yeah this is actually pretty good this is a good example i didn't expect this but yeah we got different sample rates here now keep in mind if things are already at 44.1 i don't know how much of a quality difference that you will experience like i don't know if it'll be better because everything's already converted down to 44.1 and then you're going to bring the sample rate up i think at that point it's just a numbers game or what you want it to be when you import this inside of your doll i know one time when i was dealing with logic pro when you have different sample rates it definitely affected the speed of that sample so um you know you have to go in and change the sample rate back to or I don't know it was just at that time logic was not was not capable of just recognizing the file see inside of studio one it doesn't matter what the sample rate is studio one will recognize the file for what it's supposed to sound like i and that is one of the reasons why i like dealing with studio one but um yeah so yeah in this case great so we're just gonna go ahead and just Oh, also, you, you want to make sure that this is at the full rectangle or square or whatever this is. Um, I, it says apply process rack in playback. Oh, so you can hear what it's doing, I guess, if you have something significant that I don't for what I'm doing, I'm, I'm not going to hear much change anyway. So that's fine so i'm gonna go ahead and hit process and just look how fast this is it's just bam boom 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 you know what i mean it's, it's just it's just taking it and it, it, it converted so as you can see 48 kilohertz all the way down all the way across everything is yeah great and it also took my peak and made them close or if not negative 6 db as i asked it to you know what i think it took longer because i had this on this is not what i was you know what this is interesting let me take this off because i think i confused it <laughs> i confused it let me do that again so but it's so easy to remove them all right uh, i'm gonna remove this because i wasn't really using that so let's try that again because I, I was a little bit confused like wait a second it was working really fast earlier so it might be like the speed of the drive or something like that but uh yeah let's go ahead and do that again and yeah i think that's much faster because it's not doing so much thinking well maybe it's moving the same but anyway the whole point of this is that everything is bouncing down and it's not taking as long as it would if you was in the session like going one by one each individual sample and yeah and if i go into the 
file where I saved everything. Everything is here. Never mind the number two. Well, that's the second time we bounced it down. But ba basically, everything is here. It's good to go. You can click play, make sure everything is good. But yeah. Now I'm on a Mac. So it, it may look a little bit different on the PC, but this is as much as the Mac shows in this situation is showing me that the sample right here is 48 and my my bits per second is 24 so it, it at least shows me that but it don't show me bpm right so that's the other thing like when you bounce it down like loops and whatnot the the thing that you want to do is is i i, I say what i would rather see um because sometimes it don't happen when you're dealing with samples being able to find out what the bpms a lot of times with sound designers a lot of times what they do is they're add the bpm you know in the track but i mean that's great but it will also be great and helpful if if it was written inside the way see wave files read metadata information so here at the bottom you, we can see that this one is reading 125 that's the bpm although i labeled it and this is the label this is what i named it and uh, you know for just a quick reference when you go in and you you see the files okay this is 125 but like i say there's no real way of really knowing that like in terms of like the metadata until you add it to your doll and you know inside your project because this the 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 information down here may not even be in here so um also a quick way of of, of finding what the bpm is is just throwing it in here real quick and that's just what i did i've been you know kind of off and on in this thing i'll just grab a, a sample real quick and see if i can read the bpm below like for instance now this one i just so happen not to have a bpm written in the label but this is a one shot if i'm looking at it correct yeah this is a one shot i need to go back and like take that bpm off of that because that means it's when i when you're working in a song and you speed it up, slow it down, it can it can readjust itself according to the this, this, this sample rate, the tempo, that is. But anyway, like just quickly finding out the BPM or something without throwing it inside a doll, you know, to detect the tempo, you can just throw it right in here and find out what the, the tempo is. So for all of my loops, I'll just bring this in and not even have to process anything and just verify the BPM of all of my samples, making sure that I have all of the metadata in terms of tempo inside that track or whatever. And then if I have a one shot that I have in here that has a BPM, I, I, I know to make notes and go back and, and change that. Right. So that's how batch converter works. And I think this is a great tool for like sample designers but if we go back into studio one for instance and we we look at you know just how things are set up um so real quick based on this um the file section right i'm just showing you guys how to file so i'm gonna go ahead and just refresh this right so that shouldn't be anything in there um yeah so these are the new files i, I download um we just you know convert it over um so i'm in the file section and you just have to find your drive or whatever folder you're working in and in this case i'm gonna pick an empty folder and i'm gonna show you guys like what's really cool so like if i need to go in and add a, a tempo to something you know what i mean this is what i had to do i brought some, some files back over real quick and just bounce them down came up here and adjust my tempo for this one section because you can do that you know and it's real easy you just take this and go up and down or you just type it in real quick boom boom like that and then you just take this and you throw it over here in your files now there are several options you can pick between you just hit the shift button or the shift yeah the shift key on your keyboard and it will allow you to switch between the different formats so by default the first one would be 
WAV file, right? Just normal WAV file. And that's totally fine. It will definitely read the tempo. And then the second one is render wood effects. You probably can't see it because it's cut off. But yeah, you can render wood effects. If there's effects on here, it'll just go ahead and render. Instead of going the normal route where you will bounce a file and then like, for instance, like this, like just going the normal route like this. Um, you can do this, but, or, or by the way, this is actually a great option to, to do this. If you have like a, like a, like a full section, you know, say like you have, you know, a couple of instruments that you created to create that one loop. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that might be the best. Well, one of the, the routes, you know, just take your, your, your loop range and you could say bounce between the loop or you can go between markers but in this case probably between the loop would be the best and then you can have this thing to bring back in so it'll import the track back into the session which is what i do sometimes another way to do this is just take a a random not not a random but just create a new track and then you can have it to read that instrument or that bus channel so sometimes that's what i'll do so if if, if i want to go this route i'll just put everything or you know what i'm working with in that particular section in about in, in the bus channel and i'll have it to find whatever if there was any buses here it will actually pop up here but this the only thing that's available but basically yeah it will be a bus whatever right hit okay and then it will receive audio from that bus channel and then i can go ahead and record in place like in real time i could do it there so it's like a few ways to do things but if you're just working with something real simple you can just grab this and do like what i just showed you just bring it over here switch between the different options um you can also turn, turn it into an audio loop and that would be like a studio one type thing um you know native to the studio one but in a lot of cases it's just bringing over a wave file and like i say it'll bring over the all of the metadata information and one thing i want to let you guys know just just in case if you were ever like wondering okay yeah i know about all that but i'm still having issues because the, the metadata the the tempo don't get it, it doesn't save to the to the to the uh the sample so what you want to do is basically make sure you are um you come over to advanced and you click on the audio tab and you want to make sure that this option is checked to say record tempo information to audio files right if this is not checked the tempo will not be saved to that file and vice versa if you're working with one shots and you don't want the tempo to be saved to it. you have to come in and uncheck it hit apply and then hit okay and then you know you can move stuff over like i showed you guys the other 10 times <laughs> and 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 then you will see the file without the tempo so just, that's just one of those tidbits that you have to remember depending on the file that you're working on also the cool thing about studio one is that it definitely will recognize the file like it it will pick it up sometimes it don't i've i've had situations where it wouldn't recognize the the file the tempo but right over here is uh the information information section you just hit this i button if you don't see it right away or hit i on your keyboard or whatever key command you use just just pull up the information section and here's the the file tempo and if it isn't a file tempo save like that sample designer did not put one in it will recognize the file and then it'll, then it'll ask you to approve and then you usually hit this button here and it say approve or not approve or you could change it to whatever the real bpm is and then it'll, it'll recognize it i guess that way if you need to resample like pitch pitching things or like change the tempo the the file itself will actually follow the beat you know because i do that a lot 
where I'm working with MIDI in instruments, virtual instruments or whatnot. And I'm also working with samples and out of the clear blue, I need to change the tempo. I feel like the song is too fast or maybe too slow. And I need to do that. And if I'm working with samples and loops and things like that, I need the loop to follow. I don't want to have to come in here and change, you know, because you could do this too. You could definitely change the, you know, come at the edge. In my case, it's hitting the option at the edge. My tool will change and I can like, you know, speed the sample up, slow it down, that type of thing, you know. But, but other than that, I think that's all I wanted to show you guys so like again if you're into the sample and 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 creating packs whatever i think student one student one got it down packed and it makes it super easy to to do these things um oh one, one more thing i want to show y'all also when you're dealing with samples like this if you got several in there and you got them lined up like this and you want to just get them all out actually what you could do is just select them all and it, it will all come over at the same time you know what i mean like i like i showed you so that's an option right um also if you wanted to go this route studio one will also recognize each marker it will and and think and you will bounce things between the markers so case scenario would be like i don't know working with uh like q music right if you're doing commercials and whatnot and you have to have different sections and they need to be like bounced out separately this is a great way to do that you just put in a couple of markers in here and you know i'm gonna put another marker right here put my locator there add a marker there right and you saw how i did that back but i want to put a marker back here studio one is smart enough to know hey yeah you put you you're <laughs> you're not too smart bro you you putting these markers all over the place and we're gonna fix that for you so it, it's it's if i go backwards it knows to but if you label them anyway you you know that's not gonna matter anyway but yeah so say for instance yeah whatever and then you you know like i say you go back in and bounce it down and just make sure you you say between marker or you can say between selected markers if you got any selected you can do that as well and this is just a quick way of bouncing things in sections you know that respects the marker location that's another way to do things but yeah um i think that's that's it that's all that's probably a couple of things i left out but like working in studio one has been a time saver for me like man working like this this workflow i i gotta give personas they props because i love it i love it i love this workflow now to my knowledge if you have the sphere account where you're paying a monthly subscription to have studio one i think batch converter comes in there i want to say i'm 100 sure that it it comes in there if you don't have the subscription model i think batch converter is a separate cost or maybe they made it included with it i if anybody knows exactly what's going on with that leave a comment in 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 in, 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 in that section down there somewhere at the bottom of the video yeah or the side of the video depending on how your viewing game is set up yeah just let me know but this is great stuff here that's all i got for you Elop once again creative sound creative university remember music is art your artist paint your picture stay creative without rules